it is a huge honor for me to be here and it's a rather wonderful experience because it is precisely a hundred years since my grandfather who as Sumanta mentioned was one of the fathers of the Indian wildlife conservation movement took his first photographs of wildlife in India. My grandfather traveled to India in 1913 and there wasn't very much money in his family so he didn't have any opportunity to go to university and the only way that he could find to come to India was to volunteer to join the police service. So he traveled to India in 1913 and went to a police training college in what is now Bangladesh but there were no opportunities for tiger photography at that time. He'd already started being a wildlife photographer back home in England um, and then the First World War started. He joined the army, served on the northwest frontier and then he had the incredible luck of being able to get a scholarship to go to Oxford University on a shortened forestry course and he returned to India in 1924 and finally he had the chance to put his dreams into action and take his camera out into the jungle. Can we have the next slide, please? Oh, it's here, yeah. Okay, so he did a bit of hunting himself during the First World War because it was the thing to do, but he hated it and he felt that um, he had seen so much bloodshed during that war that he wanted to uh, do something other than killing things. And he encouraged the use of the camera instead of the rifle. And in fact, Jim Corbett mentions in his book, Man Eaters of Kumaon, that it was F.W. Champion who inspired him to take up the camera rather than hunting. Um, my grandfather served as divisional forest officer in Lansdowne, Maharaj, Kalaga, and West Almora divisions. And um, he worked with the forest department from 1924 until 1947. He played an important role in the setting up of what later became the Corbett National Park, but was then called the Haley National Park. He served on the steering committee with uh, Jim Corbett and with Sir Malcolm Haley, who was the governor of the United Provinces at that time. And he was appointed conservator of forests in 1940. He campaigned for the conservation of wildlife and also for better treatment of animals in captivity. In those days, large carnivores like tigers were kept in concrete-based cages just with bars around them and the animals would pace around and around and around. And my grandfather, having seen these wonderful wild animals in the wild, he felt it was awful that they should be stuck in that kind of place. He took up photography in England back in 1910, but he came to India with the definite ambition of trying to produce photographs of tigers. He didn't achieve that ambition until 1921. He took up flat, flashlight photography, which uh, was a, a completely untried method, and he became the pioneer of what today is called camera trapping, but it was much more difficult than modern, modern day camera trapping is today. He would work out by looking at the pug marks on a pathway, what animals were walking along that path during the day, and he would set up his camera, which was a large quarter plate camera about this size, we actually still have it, and he could only take one photograph per night, whereas the camera traps of today can take moving images and so on and can be monitored from computers um, and he would place the camera next to the path where he thought a tiger might come that night and camouflage it with leaves and branches he would focus the lens on where he thought the tiger's face would be when it came along if it came along in the right direction but it didn't always do so and he got lots of pictures of the backsides of tigers the camera would be attached to a battery and a magnesium flash and he would then leave that complicated contraption and go and sit either in a machan and wait for a big flash or he would go back to a forest rest house and then come back the following morning and take the camera back to the forest rest house where he had a dark room and then he would develop the picture and if he was lucky it would be a wonderful image of a tiger, but in many cases, of course, it wasn't. 
He used uh, another type of camera during the daytime, often from the back of his well-trained elephant, Balmati, and he persuaded Jim Corbett to take up photography and filming and taught him about filmmaking and photography. This is the camera that my grandfather used a lot. We still have it today, as I mentioned. And these are the sorts of images that he got. Um, the images were actually published on the front covers of many magazines and journals around the world. And they are quite outstanding when you consider that they were taken 100 years ago. He didn't always get tigers. He didn't always get tigers. Sometimes he got leopards. And here is the sloth bear that Sumantha mentioned. As you can see, there are babies on the back of this bear. And this was the first time this behavior had been recorded photographically. And this was his most famous image. Um, it appeared on the front cover of the Illustrated London News and various other magazines around the world. But F.W. Champion was a perfectionist, and he wasn't satisfied with this image. Can any of you imagine why he was not satisfied? Any suggestions from the audience? Sorry? You can't see the stripes? Well, that's a very good suggestion. And in fact, F.W. Champion was the first person to realize that tigers could be identified individually by their stripes because they all have different patterns. But it wasn't that. The main reason why he was dissatisfied was because you can see the bamboo around the top of the left-hand side of the picture. Originally, at the beginning, when he set up this kind of studio, there was also bamboo on the right-hand side. But before the tiger came along, an elephant appeared and ate the bamboo, but didn't touch the tripwire. So there's no picture of the elephant. But the, uh, the arch that was supposed to be there is only half there. So he wasn't satisfied with that. So those are the sorts of images that he was getting. And uh, it's quite something, really, for me, as the grandson of the father of wildlife photography in India, to hand over to one of India's most eminent current wildlife photographers. And I shall now hand over to you.